1930. Right, almost 20 minutes past seven here on the program. Good to have you with us. Our reporter, Nomawetu Solwandle, is uh, out in the Western Cape. She's uh, at the launch of the rural development uh, program that's going to be taking place there. She's got the Deputy Minister, Msebisi Squatcher, with her. And uh, let's actually find out a little bit more about this youth, youth centre. Uh, Nomawetu? Well, a very good morning to you once again, Leanne, and welcome back to the Beaufort West Youth Hub. Like I said a little bit earlier, Leanne, a very impressive facility that they have here. And to tell us more um, about what it's all about and um, the department that was that actually initiated the whole thing is the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform. And now I'm joined by the Minister, the Deputy Minister, Mr. Mkabisha Squatcha. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much and good morning to you, sis, and the viewers at home. Just tell us more about this um, facility, why you decided to build something like this here in Beaufort West. This is part of our program on comprehensive rural development program as adopted by our government. This is exactly trying to make sure that the rural areas like any other area become part of South Africa in a way that is empowering. But Beaufort West in particular, because I was chosen because of the social ills this community for a very long time has been suffering from alcoholism, drugs, dropouts at school and so forth. Hence we decided to create and initiate this youth hub which is going to advance the skills of the young people here in Buffalo West, which is going to take them away from the streets, making sure that they have healthy minds to create a healthy Buffalo West and therefore a healthy South Africa. Now, Mr. Squatcher, you mentioned that um, this is a community that has been dealing with a lot of social ills for a very long time. Why has it taken government so long to do something like this in this community? Look, the issues that related to empowering the people of these rural areas and Pafotwest in particular, this is not the first. But uh, as part of our program, in fact, we started uh, this particular program of building this hub in 2013 and finished it uh, in 2015. We're just opening it today. Uh, we had to have a partnership with the district municipality, the local municipality, and of course, thanks to you, SAPC is touching lives, you know, and hence we then initiated this particular program. I also just want to speak to a youth there, Mrs. Scotcher, but very briefly, how do you make sure that um, this sort of facility is used to, to, to its full potential and that it's not vandalized? Look, I think that the youth must realize that this is about them, this is about their future, this is for them. And we would really be disappointed if we see what is happening up north in many areas where when people get angry over one thing or another, then they decide to break down what is actually something that has to advance their future. So they must guard this, they must nurture it, it's for their own benefit. Thank you very much for your time. Well, that was the Deputy Minister um, of Rural Development and Land Reform, Mr. Mkabi Siskwacha. I'm now joined by a youth, Mukam Khelo, who's going to tell us how this is going to change her life or how this has changed her life. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm actually going to conduct the interview in Isikosa. Mkam Khelo, ingaba ubomba kubuchinjenjani ile youth hub? Ubomba mchichile sisi ndo kuba besinge na yole ndao ngoko, at least ngoko sinayo, ipuli, ichimi, I land to play ground. We come and do an abaya kuazi esba. We suka like we we land to we in thousands. But benga inzi e crime. We abo. But kuazi ba mama zo kupa. But kuazi ba uchi ma ba zo kuazi kuzu kuazu thala. We kuazi ke oki land to ka. E crime e pel. Ingaba ubom beno bebunjani before ni fumani le facility. Be go too less is e crime e land to ka. E pezul. We abo. Because abando an abenga nando yo kuenza. But fige koma kuabo. Thank you very much for your time. Well, that was Ogam Khelo Gwina, who's part of the youth that will be utilizing this facility here in Beaufort West. With that, it's back to you in the studio.
Thank you very much. I'm aware to certainly some beautiful facilities out there. A very good morning to you. Let's bring you some sports news now. Starting on the Olympic front, where the Brazilian anti-doping agency said the newly opened laboratory in Rio has the full approval of Olympic authorities. Unlike in Sochi in 2014 and London in 2012, the lab will be the sole official anti-doping outfit in Rio for the Games. Brazilian Sports Minister Ricardo Leza visited the Brazilian anti-doping laboratory, which opened its operational phase three months before the start of the Olympics. The federal government invested a total of over 642 million rand into the facility, which will function 24 hours a day, seven days a week during the event, with a further 186 million rand operational budget. Almost all the apparatus being used in the, in the laboratory were imported to Brazil and will be used in universities and public institutions following the Games. South Africans have had pretty rotten luck in the ninth edition of the Indian Premier League of late. David Miller stepped down as Kings XI Punjab skipper in the middle of the tournament. Proteus T20 captain Faftu Plessis' campaign in India came to a quick close when he broke his fingers. But yesterday, A.B. de Villiers gave us reasons to smile. De Villiers plundered 64 runs in a 35-ball display of masterful batting after Royal Challengers Bangalore slumped to 67 for three against the Kings 11 Punjab. He used powerful drives and improvised sweeps to lift the Royal Challengers to 175, which they managed to defend by one run in what was an absolute thriller. A.B. De Villiers. Absolutely. As bowlers have to develop change-ups of a And that's what they called him, the Superman of cricket is A.B. De Villiers. Kings 11 required 24 of the last two overs, but Shane Watson varied his pace and length so to concede just seven in the penultimate over. Chris Jordan, playing his second IPL game, didn't start the final over well, but Marcus Stoners could not do enough to steer his side to victory. RCB win by one run. Kings 11 Moving on to football-related news, Gianni Infantino, who is presiding over his first FIFA Congress as president, voiced his sadness after his former mentor, Michel Platini, decided to resign.